hello everyone welcome back to your channel in this video i am going to show you how you can fine tune this newly released llama 3.2 model on free google colab by using unsloth if you don't know what unsloth is or if you don't know what llama 3.2 is please go to my channel just either search with llama 3.2 and we have covered it to death really in the last one day and you won't be disappointed we have installed it we have gone through its architecture conceptual level and everything also i have done tons of videos on unsloth which is one of the easiest library to fine-tune large language models in a quantized format locally or in the google colab if you are just getting started in fine-tuning i would highly suggest that you start with unsloth Coming back to this Llama 3.2 model, we are going to fine tune this. Fine tune means that whenever we receive a pre-trained model and we want that pre-trained model to adapt to our own data set, we use fine tuning. It involves adjusting models weights and biases to better suit a specific task or a data set. When we say model weight, weight simply means model parameter that connects input to output, determining the strength of relationship between features and predictions. That is what weight is. So in the process of fine tuning, we adjust the weights and biases to better suit a specific task or data set. And we build upon the knowledge of the model it gained from its initial training or pre-training. This process is particularly useful when the initial training data differs from the target task data distribution or when the model requires adaptation to a particular domain. Then we have something called as supervised fine tuning. There are a lot of types of fine tuning and one of the most popular one is supervised fine tuning. It is a type of fine tuning where the model is adjusted using labeled data from the target task. This labeled data guides the model's adjustments, ensuring it learns the nuances and specific patterns relevant to the new task. Then we have something low rank adaptation. Now, this pre-training, this fine-tuning requires to have uh, multiple GPU clusters or even if, if you are doing it on one GPU, you would need a lot of VRAM. That is quite expensive. That is where LoRa or low rack adaptation comes into play. It is a technique used during fine-tuning to efficiently adapt LLMs to new tasks without requiring substantial computational resources or extensive retraining. What LoRa does is it freezes the initial weights of the models and then it introduces additional trainable matrices called adapters which capture the task specific adjustments while keeping the original model weights largely intact. This approach allows for efficient adaptation to new tasks while preserving the foundational knowledge gained from the initial training. And by focusing updates on these smaller adapters, LoRa reduces the computational cost and memory requirements associated with fine-tuning large models, making it an attractive method for adapting AI models to specialized tasks without compromising performance. So that is what fine-tuning is, that is what LoRa is, and this is what we are going to do with this llama 3.2 we will use a custom data set you can use your own data set as long as it is in the specific format which i will also show you and then you can simply go ahead and use the same steps to fine-tune it now i'll be upfront. i still believe fine-tuning is very easy the real challenge in fine-tuning is to make sure your data set is in the proper format and your data set is of a good quality <clears throat> remember garbage in garbage out no matter how performant the model is no matter it is open source closed source or whatever if you are feeding wrong data low quality data uh, error prone data false data don't expect model to give you a quality output data back i already have done heaps of videos on data set generation generation whether it is synthetic or through web scraping there are a lot of tools i will also be discussing it in the future so stay tuned okay enough talk let me take you to the free google colab and that is where we are going to 
start fine tuning it first step you would need to do is to just click on this runtime change runtime type and then go to t4 gpu courtesy to google's generosity this is free which is really good i mean we should give credit where it is due first step we need to do is to install unsloth so for that let's run this and really hats off to daniel han uh, the founder of unsloth for creating this i will also drop the link to this uh, notebook so don't worry about copy pasting the commands you can simply uh, sit back relax and watch what is happening let's wait for it to get installed this is going to take a couple of minutes also i have interviewed this founder of unsloth on my channel just search with fireside interview with daniel and you should be able to find it a real treat to watch okay so almost there let's wait for it to finish unsloth is installed let's grab our model and for the purpose of this video we are just going to go with 1 billion quantized uh, version from unsloth so let's do it so we are going to download the model um, and then we are also specifying the maximum sequence length which is a context length of the model which means that this is how much model can process at one time we are specifying the data type to none and we are just using the 4-bit quantization here so let's wait for it to finish this is already downloaded you can see that <clears throat> the model size is got small just over one gig that is awesome next up let's specify our lora configuration for that let me run it so you see we are specifying some of the parameters like r is equal to 16 r stands for the rank of the low rank matrices used in the lora adapters which controls the capacity of the adapters and then we have some of the target modules and these are the specific modules within the model where LoRa adapters will be inserted on top of these layers and then uh, i already have done various videos where i have gone into this what is meant by this gating uh, projections and then qkv and also the up and down projections then we are specifying LoRa alpha which is the hyperparameter scaling the LoRa adapter weights which influences their impact on the model's output we are setting the dropout probability applied to LoRa adapter to zero. This regularizes the fine tuning process. We are not going to go with any bias here. Um, and so we are not adding any bias terms. Then we are uh, setting the gradient checkpointing to false. When we say uh, gradient, so these are the primarily me gradient measures the change in the model's loss with respect to its weight. And that guides the optimization process to minimize the loss. So now you know what is gradient is. And then we have few other things like a random state is this. So a random state sets a random seed for reproducibility. And then we are not using RS LoRa, which is the randomized subset LoRa adaptation, which is an extension of LoRa. Similarly, we are not using the loft queue, which is a LoRa fine tuning with quantization. And you can already see that this has been done. Now, um, next up, we need to do the data preparation because we have received our model. Next step is to get the data set. For the data set, let's first define a function which is going to split our uh, data set into train and validate. And for the purpose of this, we are just simply grabbing this Maxim LeBones data set. I already have, by the way, interviewed Maxim too. So please search the channel. Um, so uh, we are just getting this Llama 3.1 template because it is very much compatible. This is just to uh, convert our data set into conversation style. And we are applying the chat template here. So let me run it. It is going to download this data set, as you can see. And then it is going to give us a split as mentioned here and it's a very small data set of course you can replace it with your own data set if you like and then we just need to do the mapping with the within the data set so we are just using the shared gpt template with this data set again it comes with unsloth let me run it shouldn't take too long it is just standardizing that format making sure that this data set is compatible with this model let's wait for it should it take too long and i will also show you what this data set looks like so if you just print any random value from this data set this is how it should be 
So make sure if you are using your own data set, you have this content role and then content and role. So it should be something like this in a conversation format. And that is what we have done here. The simple Python function, which is just applying JML on top of these examples. Okay. So we have our model, we have our data set, and then uh, you can also, uh, you know, check more stuff from this data set. Okay. So we have our model, we have our data set, as I said, next step is to specify our fine tuning parameter. So we are using a uh, hugging face TRL, uh, TRL library and we are importing supervised fine tuning trainer from there and you already know what SFT or supervised fine training is. We are specifying our model or its tokenizer, the data set we have grabbed. We just want to focus on the text column of from that data set. This is the sequence length which the model can throw its spotlight at one point in time. And then we are just giving this data collect uh, collator. It is um, used for collating data into batches. And then we are just setting this number of processes to use for data set loading in NumProc. And then we are setting the packing to false. So we are not packing any sequence here. And these are the other arg training arguments. So let me run it while I explain it. The gradient you already know. And then we are specifying some of the other stuff like um, learning rate, LR scheduler. So the uh, learning rate primarily controls how quickly the model weights are updated based on gradients with higher values leading to faster learning, but potential instability. So we have to find a balance here. And this 2E-4 is a very common value. And then we have some, we are specifying if we are using floating point, BF16 precision, and then we are specifying the weight decay. So weight, you already know what weight is. It is a model parameter that connects input to output, whereas weight decay, which is also known as L2 regularization, adds a penalty term to the loss function to discourage large weight values, preventing overfitting and promoting model generalization. So all in all, all of these parameters, if you want to say it in simple words, what they are doing it, they are using gradient, learning rate, LR scheduler, weights and weight decay. Gradients are informing weights update, learning rate, scaling these updates, LR scheduler, adjusting the learning rate, weights are updated to minimize loss and weight decay regularizes weights to prevent overfitting so that model doesn't hallucinate or start making mistakes. So let's wait for this trainer to get initialized and we will then actually start the training shouldn't take too long and that is done here next up let's specify the unslots train on completion method to only train on the assistant's outputs and ignore the loss on the user inputs and of course you can customize it as per your own requirement but i would highly suggest you just run it on your data set it is going to make sure that instruction part and response part are set according to this headers, which is required by the model. So let's wait for it to finish. Should it take too long? And that is done. If you like, you can also even verify that what this has done. This has primarily all it has done. It, it has just masked it. And you should find that your data set is now in this format. That's about it. Okay, so that is all we needed to do in terms of preparing our model trainer and everything. Let's run the training now. And the command for that is very familiar, very simple. We just run this trainer.train. It goes through 60 steps. You can either go through steps or you can go through one epoch, which makes a pass through whole data set instead of just 60 random steps. But for the purpose of this demo, we are just going to go with the steps. And this is going to start through our steps and uh, as it progresses through it, the loss will start coming down. So let's wait. You see that it has, it is now starting. The first step is there and it, as it progresses, the training loss is start coming down. It will fluctuate because it just gets new data and then goes through it. But ultimately it just keeps coming down. So let's wait for it to go through 60 steps. Shouldn't take too long because we're just using very small data set, a very small model. And the fine tuning is done. As you can see that the loss has come down. Now let's do the inference with our new model. 
So we are just importing the unslot library, we are specifying our Lama 3.1 tokenizer and then we are just using the fast language for inference from unslot and then this is a prompt template, we are passing it the prompt template, all we are asking it to do is to continue, continue the Fibonacci sequence and then <clears throat> we are generating the response. So let me run it, shouldn't take too long, it's very quick. There you go. So we have our response and you can see that it has responded with a perfect uh, value. And now if you want to save this model, the fine tuned one, new one locally, you can use this command. You can just name it anything you like. Or if you want to push it to hugging face, you would just use these two last commands. And of course, you would need to log into hugging face from your profile. You would need to grab a right token and then just specify your token here it's a free token which you can get from hugging face so that's about it you can see that unslot makes it really easy to fine-tune any model and in this case we have fine-tuned llama 3.2 model quite easily similarly we just use llama 3 1 billion model as you can see here or if you want to do the 3 billion just replace this 3 billion here these are the text models i will also be covering the fine-tuning of the vision model uh, very soon so stay tuned but for now thank you for watching if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you are already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching